A reboot is the opportunity to redesign the type chart. Could we build it better? So of course I'm going to propose my own edited type chart for Pokemon. I'm doing a series based on exploring what could happen for a reboot. This is obviously a place we would arrive at at some point. I'll give you a heads up now that this episode is crunchy with going through numbers and explaining why I make the modifications I do. However, I have all the good game design stuff first, and I give a heads up before going into the overly detailed section, so you can pick your poison. Starting out, I could go through and rip out old elements and put in my own, but I don't really see a reason to do that, at least from a game design perspective. At the moment, Pokemon has 18 elements, which is a really nice number. You can divide it by 2, 3, 6, and 9. Why I mentioned this fun little bit of maths I will return to later. Also, all these elements are pretty iconic for Pokemon to have in there, so there isn't a very strong reason to change things here. Sure, we could remove elements that we don't like or think doesn't fit in well, but what does that accomplish other than a new type chart? I believe there is a different approach in the design I would like to demonstrate by simply tweaking the advantages and disadvantages, and I can best do that by keeping the elements in the type chart the way it is now. However, if I was going to chop and change things, the question I would put forward is, can we merge rock and ground into one type? Thematically, they are very similar, although offensively and defensively, they have very little in common, a slightly greater difference in attack with just a few commonalities in defense, so this would get a little tricky. The way you would combine them is to find what purpose we want this new ground rock element to serve. Balancing flying and electric types with immunity spread around is pretty handy from ground type. Giving fighting something to crack in half from the rock type is cool. I'm not going to indulge this idea too much as, like I said, I like having 18 elements. Of course, with those two combined, you can introduce a whole new element that you could put to good and interesting use, but I could go on forever coming up with ideas. We could design a new chart for any of the following suggestions. Magic type, acid type, void, crystal, divine. I like the type from Dungeons and Dragons called ooze, which I think might be fun to think about. Grimer, Ditto, Slugma, Gudra, and Melton would fit into this. There was a Pokemon mod called Pokemon Uranium which introduced a radioactive nuclear type and interesting new mechanics that went with it. Like I said, in terms of game design, there is not a lot of reasons to go changing the types. There are, however, plenty of reasons to do some rebalancing. One of the problems that Game Freak had since the start is that they couldn't drastically change the type chart between generations too much because they had a lot of things not wanting them to do it. An anime, a trading card game, and most notably player expectations, to name a few. Let's just sweep that all under the rug, knowing that all those things could get refreshed with a reboot. Now, let's really get started. My goal for this is to rebalance the type chart in a way that creates multiple balanced type loops. This will result in the ability to have more than one starter set of three Pokemon to choose from when the game begins. Every game has started with the choice of fire, water, or grass Pokemon to take with you, but what if we had other choices? The whole point of starter Pokemon is to teach new players about the type chart having super effective and not very effective elements to battling. Fire, water, and grass are the three main elements that are perfectly looped, from Gen 2 forwards. Fire beats grass, grass beats water, water beats fire. Now go explore the world and learn the rest. There is of course one other perfect loop set, fighting, flying, and rock. The problem is that flying type Pokemon, excluding one legendary and just a few new ones in recent times, are always paired with another type. Most of the time, normal type. This is a pretty heavy imbalance because normal is half as effective against rock and is vulnerable to fighting. Not great unless the developers get cool with most bird Pokemon just being plain flying type, which maybe now they are. I still have my doubts for the future, but we'll see. Moving ahead, we have an imperfect loop in Fighting, Psychic, and Dark. 
In the first generation, Psychic was brokenly overpowered. It had almost nothing it wasn't effective against. It was supposed to be vulnerable to bug, but they didn't put any decently offensive bug-type moves in the game. Then they introduced the dark type in response to that imbalance, as well as a number of edits to help. An interesting point of note about these three is that they have zero impact on the original Fire Grass Water Loop, a fact that was taken advantage of in Generation 6 for the starter set. Another almost perfect loop is Ice, Ground, and Steel. Ground is the clear winner because it has no weak attack against either of the other two. Although bringing this loop into balance would strengthen Ice and Ground, Steel takes a heavy hit. One last interesting observation before I make some changes are these elements. Electric, Ice, and either Poison and Dark, or Psychic. We have not really loops, but sets of types that don't make any notable impact on each other. These could technically make for some nice starters. You can even add the normal type in these sets. It's just times one effective against itself instead of half, like all these are. I think it would be really cool to have a pure ice type starter with the choice of electric, dark, and poison on the table. All right, let's bring this back around. Why do I even want to have multiple perfect loops? A few reasons, actually. Firstly, it acts as future-proofing for many games to come because things can be swapped out over time and kept interesting. One idea I would like to put forward, though, is not just the choice of which three Pokémon to start with, but maybe what town you want to start in. A few different starting locations could have different starting sets available. As you reach other towns, sure enough, you can pick one of the three again so you aren't excluded too much from the rare types. As another side note, I would also like to put forward that you should probably be allowed to catch starter Pokémon in the wild because, since the second generation, all you need is a daycare center and a ditto and you now have an army of Bulbasaur at your disposal. Of course, they don't have to be common. Something being rare makes it special, but maybe they are locked behind a quest. On the other hand, so long as there are unique Pokémon in a game version, there will be people wanting to trade. Next on the reasons why is for micro-sequels or spin-offs that could take place in smaller or closed-off regions. You can have a few less Pokémon featured in them and make the type chart smaller to really take advantage of this. Because there are 18 types, as a developer you would really want to have at least 3 to 5 Pokémon of each type. That is an average of over 70 Pokémon. What if we wanted to create a small game of just 50 Pokémon in it? and all of them new. We can at least have a starter set that could take place in an ecosystem that doesn't force the game narrative to shove in fire, grass, and water environments to justify their presence. Yes, you could simply have the professor hand you one of each, but without a place to get more of that type, it becomes a game balance nightmare. This is where that math I brought up earlier comes in. We can have the type chart go to the size of 9, 6, or just 3, and still have a balanced game. Actually, you could have a type chart of whatever size you want, but it might be nice to divide the chart evenly over a few different games that take place in different parts of the world without doubling up on anything. A region that takes place in the desert wouldn't have grass or water types in it, but we could have something else now. Before I show the full, completed chart of my edits, I'll go over the smaller details. The first one I'll mention is probably the most obvious, Fighting, Psychic, and Dark Types. As you can see, we can make it work as a perfect loop without changing much at all. The problem you might immediately think of is that by removing Dark Types' immunity to Psychic, we throw the balance back out of shape. This is not necessarily true. Minor tweaks elsewhere on the chart can bring everything back into balance easily, and I'll show you what I mean later. Next, and I don't like this idea, we could inject and enforce an electric ice poison loop. The reason I recommend against it, and why I won't be doing it for my version, is because we can have them be starter types just as they are. I believe that all players, including young, brand new ones, understand the concept of scissors-paper-rock style gameplay even before they turn on the game for the first time. 
They might not affect each other strongly, but you could still show off that mechanic with the Pokemon available in the starting areas. Case in point, Pikachu against Pidgey on Route 1 in Pokemon Yellow. Ice, Ground, Steel. Again, a simple tweak here, and the game already has some interesting differences. The Pokemon games wouldn't even change all that much if we just had these two new loops. Three starter loops and a neutral set is a pretty good place to be. Or it would be if I wasn't about to pivot here. I'm going to actually forego having this loop in my edit in favour of a different setup. Firstly, Ice is already in the neutral set, so it doesn't need to be in another set. Secondly, I want to make an entirely new loop, just for the sake of argument and what I think is a more interesting starter choice. Ghost, Dragon, and Fairy. Changing quite a bit from what it was, so it is somewhat contrasted against the Fire, Water, Grass loop, the point of difference is that each type is super effective against itself instead of half. Note, Dragon is now more powerful due to being able to hurt Fairy, even just a little, it would probably be worth lowering its effect on something else that could use the boost, like Dark type. I haven't actually done this for my chart, but the case for it could be made, is all I'm saying. Again, the edits I will introduce later help Fairy out too. I can imagine now people yelling, Why would dragons be effective against ghosts, or ghosts against Fairy? Because people want things to narratively make sense in their mind. The problem with this is that you could, and people have, debate endlessly for why anything works the way they do. Birds would get fried in the sky from lightning and ground would disperse it safely, is the current logic in Pokemon. However, in real life, electricity is not attracted to flying things because they don't complete a circuit, while lightning always aims to reach the ground. See what I mean? All edits we make, we can have an NPC in the game world give a reason as to why it is so, which I think would be some cool details to add to the game world as you can indeed find in the games. But that is a different discussion. For Ghost, Dragon, and Fairy, these elements are based on fictitious things. We could come up with any reason we want for why that loop exists. Just for contrast, because Fire, Water, and Grass exist in reality and have a logical setup already, we couldn't change those. Here is the type chart from Generation 6 onwards, and my edit. Here are some numbers to show their overall strength compared to each other. One point for an advantage, two for an immunity. But don't worry about this too much just yet. I know this is a lot to take in, so I'll just go down the list and mention the changes I made and why in a little bit. An important thing to note when going into it is that just because something has the highest or lowest numbers doesn't mean it's the best or worst type. Although I have changed some numbers drastically, I haven't changed things all that much when you really look at it. Right now, in the games, Grass has the lowest number because it is half effective against seven types and only double against three. Plus, the defensive numbers aren't great either. However, it has more Pokémon and more powerful moves than Bug types. Naturally, you can mess with the balance again after playing around in the chart by what is available in the gameplay. Bug is arguably the weakest because it has few powerful moves with fewer Pokémon that can learn them, and they evolve fast at early levels, making their stats weaker in comparison to others. One last note, there is a good reason why you shouldn't bring all the elements into perfect equilibrium across the board. Part of the gameplay is that some elements are stronger than others, but those strong elements have very big weaknesses from lesser types. Everything has a trade-off. A good video about this is from Extra Credits, Perfect Imbalance. To summarize, games that are too perfectly balanced will typically have players develop refined and optimized strategies. Trying something outside those strategies is unwise until you fully understand those strategies and then work on something new. Chess is a very balanced game, and until you have done a lot of research to catch up, you won't be developing your own strategies for a long time, if ever. Games that have a wider imbalance, not broken imbalance, but carefully constructed imbalance from the game developers, have players, from the beginning, learning and growing throughout their gameplay experience. To quote the episode on how to create this system of perfect imbalance, First, you have to create a game where no matter how skilled the player is, their character or deck or avatar can't be great at everything. 
Second, you need to have a firm knowledge of how your pieces interact and what beats what on an intuitive and mathematical level. Finally, as with Magic the Gathering, Ultima Online, and League of Legends, you need to give your players a wide enough pool of options that they can find an answer to whatever you're going to throw at them without it having to be one specific predetermined answer you have planned. For the changes I have made, although I have closed the gap between the strongest and weakest elements, I tried to maintain cyclical imbalance by making sure to roughly follow these rules. Now, if you're not interested in going into this very long, detailed dive into my type chart, you are welcome to skip ahead to the conclusion. I've put a timestamp there for you. I won't be offended if it's not your cup of tea. Let's go through the list of changes. Normal. No change, it's fine. Fire. Currently ties for second place with Ghost and Fairy for effectiveness, but it has an 8 point lead over Grass. I would like to close this gap a bit. I want to remove the complete type advantage over Ice and have them be neutral towards each other. After all, Ice removes Fire's heat and Fire melts Ice, so it's a draw in my book. Fairy is no longer half as effective, it is just neutral. I never really understood why this is the case. Fire was already good and didn't need the extra buff. Spoiler alert, as you can see on my own chart, I change Fairy a lot. Water. Defensively, I have changed nothing. Offensively, I have weakened it to now be at the same viable level as Fire is at this point. Half effect against ice, I think this makes sense narratively, and although it is super effective against ground, I have removed this for rock. Soil erodes easier than rock does in nature. Still does erode it, hence why not half damage. Electric. I never understood why ground was immune to electric whilst rock was neutral in defense to it. Fixing that now. Just to half damage. Also, metal conducts electricity, so let's make it super effective against steel. This actually keeps electric type at the same viable level whilst giving rock the much needed buff and steel the much needed takedown. Defense wise, I have changed nothing for electric. Grass. With a few small tweaks, I have beefed it up a little, from negative 5 to negative 1. Still a weaker type, just not as much. I have taken away the half effectiveness against poison and bug up to neutral. They still have the attack advantage. I'm just letting grass fight back a little. Also, I'm introducing a complete type advantage over fairy. My thought behind this is that fairies are creatures of nature. They would be very vulnerable to having nature turn against them. Ice. Being that ice is a bit of a rare commodity amongst Pokemon, I thought I would make it a stronger type taking it from negative 3 to 0, and all I have done is neutralize ice and fire against each other and added a resistance to water. Fighting. Keeping this at the same level but changing only one thing. In line with the new type loop, it resists itself now. One point gained for defense, but one lost for offense. Poison. Again, same level, but two things changed here. It no longer resists grass, but I have made it super effective against bug. Pesticide comes to mind for the logic behind this, but don't worry about the already weak bug type. You will see how I have given it some muscles soon. Ground. This type might be a little overpowered, so I thought I would take it down just a bit. I wanted to buff fairy a little, due to my changes, so it gets a resistance to ground now. I have taken away grounds times 2 advantage against rock and steel down to times 1. I changed steel in other areas to take some of its power down, however I can be easily convinced to bring back grounds advantage over it by making ground stronger, though this would make what I have already made a slightly weaker steel type even weaker. Flying. The only other type to have nothing changed. Psychic. Although my changes make it tie for last, as I said before, this doesn't make it the weakest type. I have set it up in a way that it can harm the defensive types normally. Ground, rock, steel. Taking away steel's resistance to it. Although I made dark just resistant instead of immune to help with making a perfect loop, I also made bug immune to psychic. 
I like making Bug a good solution to a strong psychic Pokemon, and I like that I would narratively justify this by saying that the mind of insects are too unique to be susceptible to it. Bug. I have taken away Ghost's resistance to bug attacks, and I have made Fairy no longer resistant to bug, but instead now weak to it. Same thought as the nature turning against it argument, but fairies can still hurt bug fine. Defensively, I have changed things up and down. It is now resistant to dark types on top of it already having a strong attack against it, making for another complete type advantage. Although losing resistance to grass and now poison being super effective, its immunity to psychic helps balance this out. Rock, being thematically a defensive element, I wanted to beef this up a bit. I have changed nothing offensively, but I have removed its vulnerability to water and ground up to times one effect, and I have made it resistant to electric to more closely resemble ground's immunity. With these small changes, it gives that extra defense. Ghost. To fit in with our new type loop, it is half damage against dragons while being double damage against the fairy type with resistance to it as well. It has lost its resistance to bug, but gained one in steel. This is due to me wanting to make bug a little stronger and making steel a little less offensive to its strong defense. Also, ghosts don't care for your metal, they should phase right through. Dragon. The only change to dragon type is, again, for the new type loop. Fairy is no longer immune, but instead just resistant, and gaining a complete type advantage over ghost. Dark. I have weakened this type a bit, but that is only because Bug now resists it, and it is now half damage from Psychic instead of immune. We could strengthen it by giving it a resistance or attack advantage over Grass type. Grass needs sunlight, after all. Just a thought, but also this new layout gives room for Grass to be weakened a little further if needed. Steel. I have also weakened this type a bit too, mostly making it a bit less offensively viable, but changing just a little in its defense. It is still a very strong defensive type, mind you. I have taken its vulnerability to ground and given it to electric. I have also taken away its resistance to psychic type. Ghost now resists steel attacks, and it is no longer times two damage against fairy, just times one. Fairy. Now for the biggest change of all. I have taken it from a general score of 3 to negative 1. I still think it is a very viable type to have in a team, however. It is still a good choice to use against fighting, dragon, dark, and now itself. It can also damage fire normally, but now that resistance can be found in grass. A big part of why it has gotten weaker is the new type loop. It is no longer immune to dragon, just resistant. Ghost also has a complete type advantage over it. Lastly, because it is now vulnerable to grass and bug types, I have given it a resistance to ground, because... Eh, why not? Fairies like to float and fly around, right? And my final notes, yes, even after having made these changes, we could still have the ice, ground, steel loop in there, but I would argue that not all type loops need to be made perfectly balanced such as how electric flying and ground is now. Yeah, that was a lot, and thank you for listening to it. Now, if you'll indulge me, I want to make fun of the people who skipped ahead in the video. <clears throat> Why? Why would you skip ahead like that? Nah, you're alright. Besides, this whole thing was mostly just a bit of fun and to throw some ideas out there. Ultimately, there really isn't anything fundamentally wrong with how the type chart is set up right now. As I say in every discussion, a reboot is just an opportunity to change what is otherwise currently locked in. If changes really did happen, with the power of the internet available these days, a simple fix is a patch away, even across sequels. Any new adjustment to the chart could get an update across the entire series and spin-offs, this option is even available now. Over a few years, they could make a slow transition to whatever Game Freak wanted, but only for connected games of now and the future. If you enjoyed this, press on that subscribe button. I've got some really exciting episodes coming over the next few months, 
as I'll be talking about the legendaries, villains, and rivals. Now, I'm sure a number of you are itching to tell me what loops and edits you would prefer, so go for it in the comments. I promise I'll think about reading it. Press the like and blossom buttons to help my channel, and as always, continue to be wonderful to each other, and I'll see you next time.